Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. My son attends a university very near the northern border of the Mojave Desert. My wife and I recently had a chance to take a brief herping trip there with my son and a friend of his. Come see what we found. Our first location was a vacant lot along the banks of the Virgin River. We like to come to this spot because we can nearly always find quite a few interesting creatures. Because one member of our party had never been on an official herping trip, we did a quick tutorial on flipping rocks. First, how to flip them towards yourself to provide a barrier between you and possibly disturbed creatures, and how to place the rock back where it was so as to preserve valuable cover for the inhabitants. Within a few minutes, and only a few flips, we found this. This species, Scolopendra polymorpha, or the desert tiger centipede, is extremely abundant in this area, as it is in much of the southwest, but I love to find them. I've noticed, as have others, that they are typically more visible in the spring, when things are cooler and damper than they are in the height of summer. Before I tell you about the rest of the trip, I'd like to thank my patrons at Patreon. You do so much to help me with this channel, and I'm happy to show my gratitude with previews of projects that I'm doing, answering your questions directly on the Patreon message system, or on YouTube live streams. I really appreciate all that you do. If you'd like to join the Aquarimax Patreon family for as little as a dollar a month, please click the link at the end of the video. And now, back to what we found on that first excursion. I think at this site in the past, we've found amphibians in at least one life stage on every single visit. The previous year, we had found toadlets in the final stages of metamorphosis. And that was in June, and this visit was in late April. So in addition to spotting some fish, which appeared to perhaps be engaged in spawning activity, we found some tiny young tadpoles. So these are likely of the toad species that we often see. Near the banks of the river, we discovered a ramshackle treehouse, and while the builders were nowhere to be seen, this desert spiny lizard, Shaloparus magister, had taken up residence there. This species is extremely abundant in this part of the state, even in suburban areas. Another lizard that is found throughout much of the state is the little side blotched lizard. Again, in the Mojave Desert, it is extremely common, even in developed areas. One thing I love about this species is how bold it is, despite its diminutive stature. They will often let me get very, very close to film them. And I love the little push-up routine that they do. When we flipped this plank, a side blotch lizard darted out and took refuge against my wife's shoe. When I proffered my hand, it boldly clambered right up and hung out with us for a little while. It appeared thirsty, so we offered it a little drink and then released it right back where we had found it. We also saw a good number of whiptail lizards. This is a smaller relative of the tegus of South America. Though I often see these within a few minutes drive of my house, they're extremely abundant in the Mojave. They're very inquisitive, and though they're not always as fearless as the side blotch lizards, they're just as fun to watch. This individual had captured a grub of some kind for lunch and appeared to be having a little trouble getting it down. It's a caterpillar. Yeah. We took our ultraviolet flashlights to an open area with lots of cover, which seemed promising for scorpions. The year before, we had visited the same spot in late June, but it was extremely hot and dry. So we figured it would be worth an attempt earlier in the season, especially since it had rained just a couple of days previous to our visit. Ready? Mm -hmm. If it will come out, oh, I don't know. That's a chunk of a rock. Ooh, that's a big one. What the heck? Nothing. Still nothing, just dirt. Now I feel bad for whoever used to live there. But look how, but look nobody. how damp this dirt is. Yeah, nobody lives there. There should be things in it. We covered a lot of ground with our UV flashlights and flipped a good number of rocks. We did find another desert tiger centipede. But despite the relatively damp ground, we didn't find a single scorpion. And I've found scorpions on a couple of our visits in the past, but nothing this time. The next morning, we took a quick trip to one of my favorite herping spots. A few years ago, we saw some desert tortoises there, and you can check out that video 
up above. Uh, and last year I even found my first wild death feigning beetle, and you can watch that video as well. This year we really didn't have as much time to look around as usual, so even though the scenery was absolutely beautiful, there were no particularly noteworthy herb sightings. But that's okay. One thing I've learned about herping is that you never know exactly what you'll find. And another thing about herping is that when you have a chance, no matter how brief, it is always worth the attempt. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell so you won't miss my next video. We had a bald eagle sitting on top of the Cosmo oh, a couple of weeks ago. That would be something to see. I'd love that. Hard to believe there are only 2,000 people here.